If you're interested in the Hornady Auto Charge Pro, this video is for you. Gavin Gee here from UltimateReloader.com. It was almost exactly 10 years ago I brought you my first content covering the Hornady Auto Charge. Fast forward to today and I've got the Hornady Auto Charge Pro. In this video, we're gonna get it out of the box. We're gonna see what's included, compare it feature by feature to the Hornady Auto Charge, and we're gonna run a few powders through it. Let's get going. Well, there you have it. I've got everything out of the box. I've got everything laid out neatly. Here's what we've got. We've got, of course, the main unit. We've got a reloading and case cleaning guide here. We've got the instruction manual. We've got a cleaning brush. We've got the windscreen. You could call that a windscreen. We've got the pan. We've got the AC adapter, which comes pre-configured for North America. We've got an international adapter for that a 10 gram calibration weight, a 50 gram calibration weight. We've got the platen, and then we've got the cover for the powder reservoir. Next, I'm gonna get this powder dispenser plugged in, get it warmed up, get it calibrated. We're gonna do a feature by feature breakdown. While the machine is warming up, let's get it put together and let's talk about some of the features. So the platen is gonna be the first thing I'm gonna put on here and it just needs to be set very lightly into place. There we go. The calibration weights have nice little spots back here. The pan, of course, goes on the platen. We can go ahead and zero that out. Might change a little bit while the machine is warming up. The cap goes on the back of the reservoir here. The windscreen goes in place down here. That's about all there is. I suppose we can also set the brush back here in this holder. Okay, so in terms of features, a lot has changed in the last 10 years. The first thing I would want to point out is the configuration. The original Auto Charge had a traditional design where there was sort of a silo type reservoir in the back, a tube going out to the platen in the front. This is actually a much more space efficient design. Everything has been made a little bit taller and a bit more compact. There's also a new drain. The Original Auto Charge had a very simple sort of knob on the end. Here we've got this kind of little chute type thing. It's very visually evident if we're in the non-drain mode or in the drain mode with that pointing down. We've also got a backlit touch screen. So if we hit like one of the settings here, that's gonna light up the screen. It's quite a bit larger than the screen on the Auto Charge. The Auto Charge had a completely separate keypad. This has the backlit touch screen for interfacing uh, with the unit. Also, there are four leveling feet on the bottom of the unit, whereas the original did not have leveling feet. And then we've also got an integrated bubble level here. Perhaps the change that I'm mo most excited about is the modernized load cell. You're gonna wanna check out my recent video covering the G3 1500 pocket scale and the M2 bench scale. Wow. I had zero drift with both, leaving them on for 24 hours. Very, very good repeatability. Obviously, the load cell is greatly improved in both. And this, from what I've been told, has the same type of upgrade with the load cell. Okay, so I'm going to finish letting this thing warm up, and then we're going to go through the calibration procedure. So I waited a little over half an hour. I've put on my white lab gloves just to be a little bit OCD about the whole thing. Now we hold down the zero calibrate button and it's gonna walk us through the process. So it flashes 10, we put on the 10 weight, 10 grams. I'm just gonna clean that off with my gloves a little bit there. Wait until we see 10, now we can take the 10 off. Now we wait until we see 50. There we go, it flashes 50, now we put on the 50 and it'll show us 50 when it's done. There we go. Now we should take this off and see, pass. Good to go. Okay, to start, we're gonna fill up the reservoir with some Hodgson CFE223, and we're gonna use more or less default settings for something like a 223 charge. So I'm gonna open up 
the reservoir lid, take that off. We'll pour some CFE 223 in. We're going to make sure our drain is pointing up the hole that is. Pour some CFE 223 in there. That should be enough. Blow off some excess and we're going to zero on the pan there. And then let's type in a charge weight of say 24. Target 24.0. There we go. Okay. Now we have two modes. We have automatic and manual. In automatic mode, every time we remove the pan and put it back on, it's going to dispense a new charge. And we're on auto, so let's go ahead and try that. So dispense will kick off the process. These are the default speed and time settings. The speed setting is essentially how fast the tube is going to spin. In other words, how fast the bulk charge gets dispensed and then time is the trickle time. So there we are on 24.0 charge number one. If we go ahead and dump that and put it back on, we should get another one here. Really smooth sounding actually. Even the stepping is pretty quiet on the trickle. And there we are at 24.0, very nice. Let's go ahead and do another one. Nice, okay, now I'm gonna set the speed to one instead of 0.7 and see what happens there. Okay. So the scale looks to be very fast. This, this load cell technology, I'm betting, is the same as they put in those two other new scales, the G3 1500 pocket scale and the M2 scale from Hornady. So what we're looking for is we don't want to go over. And this looks just fine actually with the speed at 1.0. So we could play with that a little bit more. Next, I say we use a short stick powder like Hodgdon Vargan. So to empty the unit, I got out a funnel. I took off the cap on the powder keg, rolled it over to the edge of the table, hung the drain right over the funnel. That worked great. The brush is useful for getting the insides out and then you do want to run the tube run it as if you're dispensing to empty the tube as well. This prevents the need to completely disrupt the machine and have your weights fall all over the place. So to be able to drain the machine like that is, is definitely the way you wanna go. Now let's take the Varget. This time we're gonna go, I think, with a heavier charge weight to kind of compare and trust. And yes, I did turn my drain up. That is a very important detail. <laughs> So, when we hit enter, the backlight comes on, as you'll see here. Now let's set a target of 54 grains, just to use a larger number. This would be, you know, something like a 30-06 type charge in that general vicinity. And so there we are at 54 grains. Let's go ahead and dispense. It's going to take a little while for that tube to fill, but not really too long. Speed is at 0.7. Once again, I think we could try turning that up even a bit more. Basically, it got up to within 0.4, and now it's gonna trickle that last 0.4. There we go. Okay, so let's try that speed increase. Let's go to 1.5. Okay. See what that does for the next one.
interesting. It got up to the charge weight faster, but it uh, was a little bit more conservative about the shutoff before it started to trickle. Let's see what happens this time one more time. But if you listen to the motor there, there's multiple steps. It went up to full speed, this 1.5 speed setting, and then it kind of reduced it a little bit as it was getting closer. There we go. I actually like that setting. I think I would use that setting. And we can also change the trickle time. So for instance, if we hit time here, we put that to 1.2. That's gonna increase our potential accuracy with the charge weight, but it's gonna take longer to finish off that last phase. There's the bulk charge and then there's the trickling. So it's gonna spend a bit more time on that trickle. But I wouldn't necessarily increase the trickle time unless I was getting overages or inaccurate charges because as we saw, it was able to get right up to the charge and get right on within a 10th of a grain, which is the resolution or the accuracy of the, of the scale. Very nice, let's do one more. A lot faster. If you see how accurately and quickly the scale re-zeroes when you put the pan back on, a definite improvement over the, uh, the first gen auto charge. So this time we had two trickle speeds as well. The first pulses were a little bit faster and then it went down to this slower setting. There we go, right on the number. <laughs> Seems to be working really well. So there you go, we've got the Auto Charge Pro out of the box, covered what's included. We set it up and calibrated it and did two different powder demos. There's a couple more buttons that I wanna show you. The first here is the setting button. You can see here we're on normal. If we toggle through the different modes here, there's one, two, three, and four. These are individual user setting modes that we can activate at any time. So if we change the target weight, the speed, the time, that kind of thing, those changes are persisted in memory. When we plug the machine back in and we turn it on, we can activate those settings if they are correspond to different loads we're working with or different powders. We can also use the units button to toggle between grams and grains. So that is an overall kind of walk through of the Auto Charge Pro. I really like the new load cell. It seems to work a lot better, not only compared to the original Auto Charge, but also other previous gen units in this product category. And again, it's a lot like what we saw with the G3 1500 pocket scale and the M2 bench scale. I believe these scales are all using this improved technology, which is much welcomed. Here's what I wanna know is, what do you think of the new Auto Charge Pro? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. Don't forget that first link in the video description. I've got a more detailed article that has more specs, pictures, and details. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.